it's Sean and Mike, brew-tunes.com, and today we're talking about home brewing recipes. And really the best way, or at least uh, one way we've been talking about, not while the camera's been rolling, about how to express a recipe that, say, I brewed. Uh, and for anyone who's reading our page on the internet or watching our video, to take that recipe and replicate it wherever they brew on whatever system they're brewing on. And, you know, I, I have been doing this because this is how I learned. I would just kind of calculate, um, you know, using software to the batch size that I typically brew. But I'm starting to see uh, recipes, like especially grain bills, instead of actual uh, weights and measures, it's more a uh, percentage of the total grain bill. So I have uh, my own personal Mr. Peabody here to explain the the advantages of presenting your recipes with percentages, how to do that, sort of the hang-ups people have with software. Yeah. Is there anything else I'm missing? It sounds good enough to me. Okay, we'll start there. So let, let's talk about just presenting recipes in with grain bills with percentages. And I have yeah. questions about how you present hops the same way. Yep. Or in, in a in a fashion where it's not like you need this yep. this this hop mm -hmm. in this weight. Yep. So I think we could have a whole other video talking about hops. Hops. Nice, I like that. Um, because hops are a little bit tricky because you're talking about time mm -hmm. and then percent alpha. Alpha, yeah. Right, and then how much you're adding. Okay. Right? So um, I think that's a, that's a trickier topic. So we're going to talk about grain bills. Let's focus on grain bills. Grain bills expressed with not weight. Right, exactly. But, but percentages percentage, right? of grain bills. Right. So where would you where would you likely see a recipe expressed as percent? I mean, occasionally, I might talk about a recipe in a percent, or I know you I know uh, certain blogs strictly work in percent. Um, Guys who people who swap with us give us their grain percent. bill in percent. Right. So in another place you might see it, if you get really cozy with uh, a local pro brewer in your town that you go see a lot and you say, hey, you know what, I really love this stout recipe that you have. Um, can you share the recipe with me? He's likely to tell you, no problem, no problem. Uh, it's 85% this, 5% that, 5% this, whatever. And you really can't ask that guy to take like a 80 barrel recipe in percentage and say, can you scale it down to five and a half pounds for me <laughs> and give it to me in pounds and ounces? Right. That's just not kosher to do. So you gotta, you gotta figure out how to work with the percentages, right? So scaling a recipe based on size transcends, uh, percentages, talking percentages transcends that because mm -hmm. you can just use that same percentage scale based on your batch size. I know, for instance, most homebrew recipes are, we say they're five gallons, but if you look in like BYO Magazine, they're actually five and a quarter. Jamil, Jan uh, Jamil Zanishev talks about his recipes in five and a half gallons. My final volume tends to be six and a half gall mm. gallons, right? I, I, so when I give you a recipe, it's for six and a half gallons, and if I give you the poundage and you try to make a five gallon recipe for a 1050 beer, you're gonna get like a 1062 beer yeah. and be like, oh my gosh, what's going on? <laughs> um, so. That's one thing. And then another thing is uh, we also don't always effectively communicate efficiency. Your mash louder efficiency is different than mine. Yep. And then as we discussed a couple videos ago, sometimes I mash in one ton, sometimes I mash in a different ton, and I have slightly different efficiencies in either one. So if I'm telling you a recipe, now you need to know, now I have to tell you the efficiency, right? If I'm giving it to you in pounds. Mm percent gets you around that because the percentages hold up. What happens is when you work with percentages, if if I'm getting 80% efficiency and you're getting 70% efficiency, you would factor that in to the final poundage. So, so let's just start with how you work with percentages then in a recipe, right? So if you don't have software at your disposal, a good general rule of thumb is, I, I, whenever I build a recipe, I first think about what I want my starting gravity to be. So a general rule of thumb at 75% efficiency is that eight pounds of grain, total grain, will give you a 1040 beer. 10 pounds of grain will give you a 1050 beer. Okay. Right? And, and 12 pounds of grain gets you just over 1060. That's just a general rule of thumb, right? So right away, if suddenly you get the green light to brew beer on your way home from work, you can swing into the home brew store 
And while you're pulling in, he's like, you know, I really want to make a 1050 beer. Right away, you can say to yourself, well, I know I'm a 75% efficiency. I got to get 10 pounds of grain. Yeah. Right? Yep. So I'm just, I'm just going to get some lager yeast. I'm going to make a pilsner because the wife said I can brew. And you don't have to figure out a recipe or ask the guy at the store. Maybe he's busy. 10 pounds gets you to 1050. So that's just a straight up calculation thing. Use any software to figure that out. Uh, we can talk about, we actually have a blog post from many, many years ago working with pounds and points per gallon, PPG, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So we can talk about that again in the future. We can link to it. Yep. So just to make life easy, so let's say you want to make a 1050 beer, that's 10 pounds of total grain. So it's not really rocket science to say then that, well, if I had a recipe that was 85% pale malt, 10% wheat, and then 2% something else, 2% another thing, and 1% something else, it's just a simple fact. Uh, you just multiply 10 pounds by yeah. that by that as a percentage. So 10 times 0.85, 35. So that's eight and a half pounds. You don't even have to do the math. Eight and a half pounds of base malt, one pound for 10%, 0 0.2 pounds for the 2%, and 0.1 pound for 1%. There you go. It's pretty straightforward. Now you've automatically converted it. Now, let's say your efficiency is 75%. Is, is 70%. Yeah, I and that's say, for 75, 75, right? Yeah. You can just then scale by multiplying those pounds by 75% and then dividing by 70%, 0 0.7. That's the that's yeah. the factor. Yep. And now you'll be at like 0 0.12 something per, you know, uh, pounds. Um, it's pretty straightforward like that. The numbers, I use 10 pounds as easy math to talk about it, but that works if you're doing the 12 pounds or eight pounds or some weird thing for there. Um, and if you're not, it's not rocket science. So if you accept that eight pounds is 1040 and 10 pounds is 1050, well, maybe I wanna be somewhere in the middle. I'm okay with nine pounds or nine and a half pounds. And the other thing too is you shouldn't stress out over how do I weigh out 0.1 pounds? Well, 0.125 is an eighth of a pound. So just weigh out at this, because I know that our homebrew store, their scale actually weighs out and it's a, the thing actually reads in fractions, <laughs> Yeah. right? So, um, which is weird as opposed to giving you a number. But if you wanted to convert pounds to a number, like either in ounces, uh, one pound is equal to 16 ounces, right? So uh, you can do that math. So like 1% of a 10 pound beer is 0.1 pounds, that's 1.6 ounces. Um, if so if a, the small scale at your home brew shop can weigh in ounces, you just change it to ounces and weigh out 1.6 ounces, right? Um, and you're there, it's pretty straightforward. Um, on a side note, one ounce of hops weighs 28 grams, right? <laughs> Only because uh, in, when, I use, when I use beer smith, which, and I don't use beer smith to formulate on my recipes, but if I'm playing with recipes, um, grams are I actually weigh yeah. stuff that's in the ounce range rather than do ounces. I, I do it in grams. Yeah, but that's that's a side note. Or another hop video. Hop video. Yeah, yeah. We'll wait for that. Yeah, because you know, then you got to talk about isomerization and which formula you're using to calculate IBUs and stuff. That just becomes a mess. Um, so, oh, I, I mean, I think that handles it, right? I mean, it, there can be more questions below. I can try to. If there are more questions, I can put. We can do another video, or I can do a screenshot video of the basic math, calculating the math. In the future, we can do a video of actually working with PPG and how to calculate this. Yeah. In general, I always, if I'm just trying to do it on paper, in general, one pound of malt gives you 37 points of gravity per gallon, right? So you got 10 pounds times 37, that's 370 points, divided by five is gonna be 1070 something, OG, but you haven't adjusted for efficiency, so you have to multiply the 70 now by percent. Whatever your percentage efficiency is. Right, so at 70 percent, that's like back to about like a 1050 something, yeah, right? So that's where it comes from. Mm. Um, so I guess one last thing, or why does this matter? Why does this matter to me, in my opinion, is that um, I think sometimes we're a little bit too dependent on software, and sometimes people use Beersmith a lot or other softwares a lot. And what they do in Beersmith doesn't reflect what actually happens out in the brew kettle and the fermenter. And they say, well, reality isn't matching up with the software. And I say, well, you know what? Your software isn't matching up with reality. And if you can do some of just the basic math of your grain bill on paper, or at least you understand where the numbers come from, it's, how to, yeah. it's much quicker to actually, and you'll get much better at recipe formulation if you can kind of work with these numbers. Everybody's got a phone. 
phones have calculators on them. I mean, of course, your phone has an app, too. You can have a recipe app. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, if you're whipping into the homebrew shop, it takes some time to, all right, I'm going to add this malt and this to the recipe. If you've got to do it quick, working with percentages makes life easy. And I think you're going to see more and more recipes expressed as percentage. It makes sense. Yeah. I mean, certainly, like, the, just the transferability of, you know, someone's, you know, this, I brew it like this on my system. It's not going to translate well for anyone else unless they're on my system. Yeah. You want to make it, you know, as easy as possible to replicate. And I think yep. that's the whole thing about recipes yeah. anyway. Yep. If you go ahead and calculate what is a 1040, a 1050, a 1060 beer on your system based on the fact that you get 78.6% efficiency all the time. Right. Then when I give you percentages, it's very easy for you to figure out, all right, well, his starting gravity was 1055, so I need, I know I need to be in the range of 11 and a half pounds or 12 pounds of mole based on my efficiency. And then just go from there. And then you calculate the percentages. It's pretty straightforward, awesome. right? Very good. I all right. It. Bring on the questions. Bring on the criticism. Um, <laughs> why is there criticism? I don't know. Some people just be, why not just use software? I don't know. I like, I use both. I do yeah. both. Yeah. But it is good to know the, the fundamentals behind I'm it. a very last minute brewer. <laughs> I know so that. I need to be able to do it on paper. <laughs> that's right. On my way to the store, I'm thinking about it, and then you, boom. you get the green light at the last yeah. second. That's the issue. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Hopefully that's helpful. I think it is. I think that anytime you know more of the math that goes behind home brewing, the better a home brewer you are or will be. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Again, questions put them below, and uh, we'll be quick to answer them because that's what we do. All right, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel, like this video if you like it, and uh, you know we'll be talking. We'll be doing more of these things. We'll even have a hop video calculation. I guess we'll do that. We'll do that. Put it on the list. For John and Mike, Brew on. Cheers.